Okay, so as you can see, um, looking at the construction of the inside of this costume wig, uh, we already put, I think it's three zip ties that are in there. So here we go. What's great about using zip ties for this is it's an afro, you're never going to see it. Um, so we're going to put it in from the afro side so that this is hidden in the afro and isn't poking Joan in the head. Um, so the way we're gonna do that is first see where it needs to go. Where is it falling apart still? Here we go. So I'm going to not lose too much hair by letting it trapped under there. And I want it to kind of go in this area. So I'm taking the zip tie and poking it through, meeting it to my finger over here by feeling and pulling it through, but I'm still holding on it, onto it over here. So I pulled it through and now I'm going to circle it back and then pull it through again. So this is gonna be nice and flat and it's not gonna um, discomfort Joan. So I'm gonna flip it back over so I can connect it. Zip ties, man. Who would have known? So I'm pulling it all the way through nice and tight and I'm taking a junk pair of scissors and I'm the edge off. So we're gonna do that um, multiple times until we feel like moments like this is not happening. <laughs> so we'll do quite a few zip ties. Um, not sure how many it'll take because guess what? I never did this before. So I'm learning something as we go along here as well. So as you can see there's a before and after here. Um, we have added another wig down here. So the kind, the top of it's here and the bottom of it's there. And the way we did these is we zip tied them to be long lines so we can allow for more length and elongated shape rather than a ball. So um, we're gonna attach it to match that. And we're gonna show you how. So I'm going to just measure quickly. Here, right around here. So we're going to separate the wig. Make like a putty. Take the wig and we'll we're gonna put two zip ties in. So I'm gonna start. Let's see, let me measure again. Okay, so I'm gonna place the zip tie here. Here we go. I'm gonna put it in and just gonna hold it where I think it should go. I'm gonna poke the zip tie all the way through. Sunny, will you reach in and grab the that end? the inside of the wig. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, there is a face under there, yes. We're gonna have to style it and direct the waves out from the face the way we set it so that it helps to manage on set that it doesn't swallow her whole. But um, as you can see, here's one wig, here's the last wig. So, um, you know, once you start fluffing it together, it'll blend really seamless. Um, so, what we're going to do is do one more, because right now it's loose like this, you know? So we're just gonna attach it. Now this, the bottom, it doesn't reach. It, it hangs down here. We're just gonna let that go, because it'll, it'll hide underneath all this. So anyway, we're gonna take it back down. Hold that. We're gonna take it back on an angle so that it's not extra, extra weight that's pushing into our face and we're gonna go as low as we can back in the nape area of the main wig underneath. If you're doing this alone, um, 
or even with an assistant, it's good to just use clips, but I'm trying to just bang through this as fast as possible. So we're just gonna juggle for a second here. So I can feel that the nape ends right around this area. So I'm gonna take the wig, as you can see, and I know it's in here. So I'm gonna pull it down and just measure. And it'll work great. Okay, let's hold that again. Take this out of Sunny's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna get it through. I'm stretched it down, looping it through. And that will be cut, and then we are done with that. I'm working on the sweat. <laughs> okay. So, we actually have one more to go. Um, I'm excited for it to get a little bit longer and to set it so it's out of the face. <laughs> But look at my beautiful sunny under. <laughs> um, so I want a little more length. I'm gonna use the last one that I have to go underneath. Can you spin around? What I'm gonna do is use it underneath so that we get an extra, a lot of extra inches going on back here instead of making it go bigger in that direction. I think it's gonna be more beautiful if it has more length for this look, okay? So that's how we're gonna wrap this up. And then after we're gonna teach you how we're gonna set this in what I call a rip rack and set. <laughs> okay. So we put the last one in the back. And it's not cute yet back here. We haven't shaped it, but you can still see the disconnection from some of the wigs. But it's easy to blend and shape an afro like this texture. So we'll, we'll do a little bit of fluffing to blend the seams together with each afro, and um, I'm looking forward to rick racking it because it'll help straighten it and relax it a little bit, which will give us even more length. Um, it's super cool uh, to see the last wig we put this way, and we just attached it to the nape of the wig so we can have an extra layer of length. We got quite a few more inches there, and that was really important to me for this look. Was more of big and light and wide. Uh, so yeah, so now I'm gonna take you into the rick rack technique. Okay, so we're gonna start to rick rack because I want this texture of this afro to be a little less curly and a little more flat in like a really cool um, S pattern. Um, so I actually learned this technique from a backstage uh, from Marc Jacobs Fashion Week in New York when I was assistant Guido. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I'm just taking a section. Uh, the hair is kind of not very dense actually is what it looks like. So we're going to take pretty big sections and you kind of straighten it loosely with your hands. So you take one of these uh, pins and you go ahead and start by putting it at the root. So I put my finger here and I hold it here and then start by locking that in with your thumb and I'm just creating a figure eight and it's okay if parts of the other sections of the afro uh, get into this even if, though I didn't pick it up with my hand initially because it's an afro and um, it's supposed to be uh, fluffy and intertwined texture so once I get it in there I take my thumb and I lock it and then I like there's several ways of doing this technique, but it's easier for me to take this and to twist it and to make it really tight. And already you can see that does the job, but I like to do one more twist off to the side and there you have it. Um, if this, this is synthetic hair, it's actually a costume wig, um, but if it was human hair, you would use a flat iron and you would press the flat iron for a few seconds on the top and a few seconds on the bottom and eventually it'd get hot and then you let it cool down. You do the whole head, let it cool down, and then you take it out. Um, since this is synthetic hair, we're gonna use a steamer to, instead of a flat iron. So I'm gonna do one more here. So for this type of texture, I'm taking kind of that big of a section. So you put it through. 
and then you put it closer to the scalp and then your pointer finger is holding it at the top and this thumb's holding it here like this kind of like a pencil but this is here so you hold it and then you, you use this hand to figure eight your way through and then you push it and then you you um, trap it with your thumb to make more space and then you keep going trap it and then to get the ends trapped so now I'm taking it and I'm twisting this really hard and that test it you know that's locked uh, by letting go and then just to be sure doing a, a, an easy twist up that direction so it makes a that shape and I'm done we're gonna do that the three of us are gonna do that to the entire head bang through it really fast actually let me show you how fast you can go um, here we go so you take this regular pin you open it let's do one more and I'm gonna do it like I would regularly uh, without showing Thank you. 